Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will study Twins Ultrasound. Twins are classified as monozygotic or dizygotic based on the type of fertilization. In monozygotic twinning, a single egg is fertilized by a single sperm. This is further subdivided based on the number of chorionic and amniotic sacs. Its first subtype is monochorionic monoamniotic, in which there is only one chorionic sac and one amniotic sac. Only one yolk sac and one placenta will be present. The twins will be identical with same gender. No intertwin membrane will be seen between the twins. The second subtype is monochorionic diamniotic. It has a single chorionic sac but two amniotic sacs. Two yolk sacs will be found but it will also have only a single placenta. The twins have the same gender. Both of them will be either male or female. An intertwin membrane will be seen between the twins. It is made of two layers of amnion and usually measures less than 2 millimeters. Sometimes this membrane is very difficult to see. In dizygotic twins, two eggs are fertilized by two different sperm and these twins will be fraternal twins. Dichorionic diamniotic is its subtype in which there will be two chorionic and two amniotic sacs. Similarly, they will have two yolk sacs and usually two placentas as well. The twins' gender can either be same or discordant. That is, one twin can be female and the other twin can be male. The intertwin membrane will be thick because it is made up of two layers of chorion and two layers of amnion. You can see that it is much thicker than the intertwin membrane in monochorionic diamniotic twins. The T sign is an indication of monochorionic diamniotic pregnancy. This thin membrane attaches in a T-shaped configuration. It looks like a T. The twin peak sign, also known as the lambda sign, is an indication of dichorionic diamniotic pregnancy. Thick triangular shaped chorion will be seen abutting the intertwin membrane. Here are more images. This is the T sign and this is the twin peak sign. The triangular shaped chorion is seen here. Now we move on to number of placentas. These are monochorionic monoamniotic twins. We see only one placenta that is supplying both the twins. Dichorionic diamniotic twins usually have two separate placentas, but in some cases there is fusion of the placentas if they are close to each other. They will appear as a single placenta. Measuring amniotic fluid volume is important. For twin pregnancies, the maximum vertical pocket method or MVP method is used in which the deepest vertical area that is free of fetal parts is measured to assess amniotic fluid volume. The normal range of MVP is from 2 to 8 cm. Oligohydramnios occurs when the MVP value is below 2 cm. You can see a very small amount of amniotic fluid here. In polyhydramnios, there is excessive amount of amniotic fluid. The MVP value will be greater than 8 cm. These are dichorionic diamniotic twins. The fetus that is expected to be delivered first is the presenting fetus and is labeled twin A. It will be close to the cervix. The other twin is labeled B. 
Vanishing twin occurs when an embryo that was seen normally on earlier ultrasound disappears on future ultrasound scan. The other twin has normal cardiac activity and grows normally. The vanishing twin will be smaller in size and will have no heartbeat. In this image we see a small empty sac. The vanishing twin is ultimately absorbed and only one normally growing twin is left behind. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome is a complication found in monochorionic twins. It occurs due to abnormal vascular connection in the placenta. It has many features. In the first trimester, we may start to see a discordance between CRL of the twins. A 10% difference in CRL measurement can be a sign of an impending twin to twin transfusion syndrome. The twin B is smaller than twin A. A nuchal translucency discordance of greater than 20% is another sign of twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Here you can see a significant difference between NT values. Pulsed wave Doppler is very helpful in diagnosing twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Regarding ductus venosus, we may find A wave reversal in at least one of the twins. We will see the A wave below the baseline. The normal A wave is above the baseline. Winter twin membrane folding may also occur and it may be a signal of twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome has five stages. In stage one, polyhydramnios is seen in one twin and oligohydramnios is seen in the other twin. The twin suffering from polyhydramnios is the recipient twin and the twin suffering from oligohydramnios is the donor twin. Stuck twin can occur in the donor twin. Due to very low amount of amniotic fluid, the donor twin may get attached to the uterine wall. It will have a fixed position. This is the intertwin membrane resting above the stuck twin. In stage 2, the donor twin will have a small or non-visualized bladder. This is in association with oligohydramnios. The recipient twin will have an enlarged bladder along with polyhydramnios. Here is another image showing non-visualization of bladder in donor twin and the bladder is visualized in the recipient twin. In stage 3, abnormal Doppler values will be seen. The umbilical artery SD ratio will be elevated. Abnormality in A wave of ductus venosus can occur as well. In these images, there is A wave reversal in twin A and a deeper A wave in twin B. For umbilical artery, reverse diastolic flow may be observed. The diastolic flow is seen below the baseline. Fetal hydrops is in the fourth stage of twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Excessive fluid collection will be found in at least two components. Here we see ascites and soft tissue edema. It usually occurs in the recipient twin. These components include pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, ascites, generalized edema, enlarged placenta, hepatomegaly, and polyhydramnios. Skin edema causes skin thickening. In this image, we see ascites as well as pleural effusion. Here we have pericardial effusion and cardiomegaly. We see an enlarged heart and accumulation of pericardial fluid. 
in the final stage of twin to twin transfusion syndrome death occurs in either twin twin embolization syndrome is a rare complication in the surviving twin after the death of co-twin the damage is actually ischemic rather than embolic most commonly brain injuries are involved here we see fluid in the cisterns of the brain suggesting brain injury brain injuries include intraventricular hemorrhage hydrocephalus or porencephaly abdominal abnormalities include gastroschisis in which there is a defect in the abdominal wall which will cause herniation of usually bowel and other organs here the small bowel is seen outside the abdomen the surviving twin may suffer from hydrothorax which is basically a large pleural effusion a cardiac twin is an abnormality in which a twin grows without a functioning heart it is also called twin reversed arterial perfusion sequence or trap sequence it is a monochorionic twin abnormality doppler analysis shows flow reversal in umbilical artery the direction of flow is towards the cardiac twin instead of being towards the placenta acardius anephus is the most common type of acardiac twin in this type the legs will be formed normally but there is absence of normal head and brain structures in acardius and seps partially formed limbs and some organs can be seen acardius amorphous contains unrecognizable structures and organs we cannot see any normal organs in this acardiac twin acardius acormus is the rarest type of acardiac twin only fetal head is formed umbilical cord entanglement can occur in monochorionic monoamniotic twins the cords of both the twins form a knot as they entangle we can confirm an umbilical cord entanglement by using color doppler which enhances its appearance and we can clearly see the entwined umbilical cord on pulse wave doppler reduction in end diastolic flow is seen you can see a notch in the end diastolic wave form conjoint twins refer to fusion of fetal twins the twins are attached to each other you can see the fusion of the chest and abdomen the head level of both the twins will persistently remain at the same level in most of the cases the twins will be facing each other thoracopagus refers to twins that are conjoined at their chest and omphalopagus refers to twins that are conjoined at the abdomen this image has fusion of both the chest and abdomen so these are named thoraco omphalopagus twins craniopagus refers to fusion of any part of the skull of the twins here is the fusion of the skull between the twins thank you so much for watching please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos